Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, we are revisiting a... Hey, it's me, Jay. Oh, hello, Patreon supporter Jay. How can I help you? I have a project idea. Can you make it for me? Yeah, I don't see why not. Uh, I guess the uh, smart version of the automatic battery charger will have to wait a bit longer. So, what's your project idea? Can you make me a GPS-based speedometer? That seems surprisingly simple. Yeah, sure. So obviously the first thing we're going to need for this project is a GPS module and looking up GPS on our favorite shopping sites brings up a lot of options and I don't even know where to get started because there is an overwhelming amount of options and I don't know if any of these do what I need them to do. So instead of doing any actual research, I'm just going to click on this one and get my uh, friend Aurora over at DF Robot to uh, send me it with some extra goodies just sprinkled in there. Thank you Aurora. A box has arrived. Now, if I'm not mistaken, there should be a, uh... Where is it? There should be a Patreon plug in here. Hey, Jay, before you go, do you mind telling the fine people watching this video what it's like to be a Mellow Labs Patreon supporter? Becoming a Mellow Labs Patreon supporter is the best financial decision I have ever made. I get early access to all new videos and loads of exclusive content, too. And I get constant work-in-progress updates for things you're working on. Everyone should consider joining the Patreon, link in the description. I couldn't have put it better myself. Why was it at the back? It's never at the back, it's always in the box. Anywho, so uh, we've got some servos, which I asked for for a different project. We've got the uh, GPS module. We've got a Fire Beetle 2. I asked for another one because I really liked the first one. And we have a eight segment display, uh, I think. Oh, I was expecting this to be a lot smaller. I'm still gonna use it, but wow, that's gonna be, that's huge. Let's have a look at the thing I'm most interested in, and it's the uh, the GPS module. Smaller than I expected. And we have an enclosure for it with like a rubber gasket so that it's watertight. This is very nice, I like it. And then the last thing here is the uh, ESP32 Fire Beetle 2. Uh, I ended up picking this one because they have a built-in battery charger for lithium-ion batteries. So I can just plug this in and it does all the management of that for me. Although I might actually end up using the Beetle uh, instead of this one because I don't need quite this many GPI opens. So uh, I'm gonna go figure out how to make this guy talk to this guy and then display stuff on this guy. So to get these two to talk to each other, it's literally four wires. It's uh, ground, 3.3 uh, volts, RX and TX. And now here in Arduino, I've got a short script that's gonna talk to, they're gonna do a thing and it's gonna print out, you know, time, longitude, latitude, and how many satellites it's connected to. So let's compile and run this and see what we get. All right, so now if I go into my, oh Jesus. Oh, I must have triggered my anti-doxing system. That makes sense why I'm in the middle of a random field. All right, well, now that I am in the middle of a random field, I can actually show you it working. So you can see here that I am connected to six satellites and we have a good position fix. Uh, and I can copy this uh, DDM uh, coordinate thing and paste it into Google Maps. And as you can see, we are currently in the middle of a random field. Fantastic. So now that we know that that works, we can go home, uh, hook up a screen to it, and, you know, reprogram it to give us speed over time, blah, 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 uh, and hopefully not dox myself. Right, let's go home. Where is home? I don't know where I am. Good news. I eventually found my way home. I realized I had a GPS device with me. Uh, when I did get home, I connected the uh, screen to the uh, microcontroller and I programmed it to tell me the, the speed over distance over time. And then I got it to display on the screen. So over here, we've got miles per hour. Uh, I'm going very fast, as you can tell. Uh, it can't print the letter M, so it just prints the letter P. And down here, it's, uh, it tells me how many satellites it's connected to. It's kind of the best way to tell whether it actually has a good position lock on you, apart from this little blinky LED light here. But I'm hoping that's gonna be in the enclosure, so I'm not gonna rely on that. So here we've got zero seven satellites. You might think that's a five, but that's actually an S. Now that we uh, got it working, hopefully, I don't know if it works yet, I've not been able to move very fast with it. Uh, let's put it on my bike and find out if it works. Okay, 
So I've been cycling around for a little bit and uh, I've come to the conclusion that this display is not suitable for outdoor applications. It is completely washed out, even in a shaded area. Uh, I can see that the uh, GPS module is getting positioned because the little green LED on it is blinking. And I can see data on the display if I go like this, but with, with it being uncovered, I cannot see anything. And I can't really check if I'm actually like traveling the speed I'm traveling because I can't go like this while cycling. So uh, I'm gonna go home and find a different display. I'm back home. Uh, so I installed one of these little OLED displays and I've had them for a while for a different project and I never ended up using them. And oh my God, are they so much nicer than the uh, seven segment one. First of all, you can see it. Uh, second of all, implementing this in the code was so much easier. Instead of like having to tell it what area to try to display what character in, you just tell it like, hey, please play these characters for me. And it does it, like there's so much more space. I went from having like technically 56 pixels to like 4096. It's so much nicer. Look how much space I have. I'm able to display the miles per hour, kilometers per hour, number of satellites and the time. And there's still so much space on this side of the screen. I can play animations on this. So now that I'm down ranting, let's put this on a bike and see if it works. Okay, so the good news is it works. Uh, I was gonna do a catch up out here, but it is so incredibly windy. Uh, so uh, I'll see you back at home. We had a lovely day yesterday. It was like 20 degrees, there was a cool breeze, and then today happened, and it's just rain and wind and wind and rain and wind. But I can at least confirm that it does in fact work, and it even tells me the right speed. I, I downloaded an app on my phone that tells me the GPS based speed and it said the same number as this guy, so it works. Uh, the only real issue I did have was that the, uh, the, the display got a little bit crowded, but I kind of have a fix for that, so I'm not worried about it. Right, I'm gonna go and design a nice little case to put all of this in and finish this up. Great news, I have decided to spare you the modeling, 3D printing, assembly, and soldering montage. Here it is. Look at how cute it is, it's like a little Tamagotchi. As you can see, I've added a button and an on and off switch and then we've got the USB for programming and charging on the side. Uh, let's turn it on. When you first turn it on, we've got a screen with all of the information, but then when you press the button, it has an enlarged version of the miles per hour and kilometers per hour. And then I have a shameless plug and then the third screen is just an off screen. And the reason I have an off screen is that when you're charging it, it stays on, so I don't really want burning on the display, so I've just added a button that turns the screen off, but the GPS module is still technically active, so it's still doing its job, it's just not displaying anything. I've even added a secret doxing mode, so if I hold this button down, it's gonna show you my coordinates. Ah, damn it. Yep, I should've expected that. Um, well, if you wanna build one of these things, uh, the links are down below the like and subscribe button, and um, I guess I'll see you on next week's live stream. If I can find my way home, I don't know where I am.